Give your hand. Thank you. Just a minute. What are you doing in my workshop? Uh, I'd like to borrow a thingy jig to go in there. How dare you? This is my private workshop. I know. What would you say if you opened your safe and found me inside it? <laughs> Don't laugh. It's a serious question. Sorry, Martin. I'd say, hello, Martin. How are you? No, you wouldn't. You'd say, what do you think you're doing in my private safe? Well, I must admit, I would be curious. It's only one foot square. <laughs> You know what I mean. A safe or a workshop is a man's... Best friend. ...sanctum. And you've no right to be here without my permission. I asked Anne. She said it'd be all right. Oh, did she? In that case, you were off the hook and she is on it. Now, this thingamajig you're looking for is called a bit. Of what? <laughs> I won't one at all in a minute. Sorry, Martin. Now, what size bit do you want? I don't know. I just want to drill a hole in the wall. People make me shudder when they say things like that. Now, look here. There are 32 different size bits in this bit box. Men have made these. And I'd like them back in the right order when you finish just drilling your hole. Yes, Martin. Thank you, Martin. That's funny. I was thinking about manure the other day. Oh, here we go. Here comes a so-called joke. No, no, seriously. You dig it into the garden, don't you? Well, you don't make a cake with it. <laughs> and that is a joke, that is. That's a proper one, that is. <laughs> yes, you do dig it into the garden. Only, you see, a mate of mine's a farmer. The thought occurred to me, he'd let me have tons of the stuff. Would it be well rotted? I don't know. Why? Why? Fresh manure scorches your rhizomes. <laughs> Does it? Oh, yes. Well, I'll make sure it's well rotted then. Would you like some? No, thank you. We've always got along very well together. OK, Martin. Uh, oh, thanks for the, um, thing of me, Jake. Have you got any roll plugs? I've got some cooked ones. I'll say it again. Have you got any roll plugs? No, Martin, I don't think I have. And I'll like these back as you find them. Oh, impossible. I'll be using one. Is that your drill? Yes. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, this, that's no, right. you're not touching her. She does not leave this workshop. Tell you what, I'll bring the ball round here. Yes, if you want. Martin! Martin! Coming! Uh, you come with me. All right, you tyrant. <laughs> Open University. I've been accepted. I'm a student. Oh, well done, love. I'm so pleased. Congratulations, Anne. Undergraduate programme. Yes. Resulting in a degree, Paul. When do you get that, Anne? Well, not for a while. I haven't actually got my books yet. Nevertheless, you will get a degree. It'll seem funny to you, Paul, won't it? Living next door to someone who's got a degree. He's got one of his own. Yes, I know. <laughs> but it'll still seem funny to him living next door to someone else who's got one. What course are you doing, Anne? 20th century studies. Sounds interesting. Uh, tw uh, 20, uh, tw 20th century studies? Yes. Oh, uh, uh, which 20th century study would that be, then? Uh, geography, history, science? No, no, the course is called 20th century studies. Are you sure they've got that right? <laughs> well, I think it's likely that they have. Hmm. Well, what sort of 20th century things will you be studying well, then? Well, quite a range of subjects. Urban change and conflict, issues in crime and society, health and disease, the changing experience of women. Yes, I see, yes. <laughs> You've got your reservations, haven't you? Well, yes, I have. I mean, is it a proper subject? As in prim and proper? No, as in... Uh, take trousers. A degree in trousers? Now, look, <laughs> hear me out. Now, I'm wearing what I call proper trousers. I bet I'm not. No, as a matter of fact, you're not. <laughs> Do you see what I mean, love? Martin, a few minutes ago I was happy. Now, don't go and spoil it. I should change my course to taxidermy. <laughs> oh, just an opinion, Anne. Yes, well, I'd better be off. Oh, uh, <clears throat> thanks for the uh, thing in the jig, Martin. Bits. Oh, that reminds me. You'd better borrow one of these as well. Oh, sweeties. <laughs> it's to get the rust off your disgusting drill. Thanks, Martin. I don't know. Here I am with a disgusting drill and improper trousers. There's no hope for me, is there? <laughs> I'm sorry, love. I didn't mean to be a killjoy. I know. I shall show off about you at work, you know. Will you? Oh, yeah. Not every bloke whose wife is doing a degree. Preen, preen. No, it isn't. I, 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 don't worry, love. I mean, I, I'll get used to it being called something peculiar like 20th century studies. Do you know what I think your middle name should be? No. Almost. <laughs> Martin, almost. Right. I don't get that one, love. <laughs> well, 
Doctor, I just brought these back. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. You didn't use this, then? No, sir. Suit yourself. But if Tower Bridge got rusty, we'd all be in trouble, wouldn't we? Very <laughs> true. Oh, Marcin, would you do me a favour? Oh, uh, well, um, it's nothing beyond the fringy, is it? No, you remember that mate of mine, the farmer with the manure? Yes. Well, he's promised to let me have some, and I'm going away for a couple of days, so I wondered if you'd take delivery for me. Certainly. When's it coming? Tomorrow afternoon. Act? Uh, sorry, can't be more precise. No, I seem to be the last guardian of that word round here. Well, never mind. Where are you off to? I'm playing a pro-am golf tournament in Jersey. Oh, I see. Just a minute. Pro-am? That's professionals and celebrities, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Well, you're not either of those. <laughs> no. Well, how do you get invited, then? I'm just making up the numbers. God, everybody knows you, don't they? I suppose Sean Connolly got on the phone to you, did he? <laughs> he did. <laughs> He's a nice chap. Seriously. Just a minute, just a minute. Taking delivery of this manure, what's involved? Manure? You know what I'm talking about. Paperwork, invoices, worksheets, dockets. I just asked the bloke to stick it on the drive in front of my garage. Yes, that would be it, wouldn't it? I'll see you, Martin. Bye-bye. Give my best to Sebi. Who? <laughs> Severiano Ballesteros. They call him Sebi, don't they? Do they? I didn't know that. <laughs> Tea? No, no, I'm sorry. I've got this manure coming and I want to keep on top of it. <laughs> you will have a bath before you come to bed, then. Oh. <laughs> Anne. Hmm? Why is it that I get mohills and Paul doesn't? Charisma? It's me you want to see. Mr. Ryman? No, I am his official representative. There's a lot there, isn't there? Oh, it's just Tom alone. Where do you want it? Well, I don't want it on my drive, do I? Put it on Mr. Ryman's. All right, all right. Everybody's a bloody boss. It's Martin. Oh, yes. Hello, Martin. We're just doing a bit more to Neddy. Oh, yes. Bless him, yes. Bless him. And Howard Hilda, I'm in a fix. Oh, dear. What's the matter? I've got a great pile of manure dumped in my drive. Why? It's not a why, Howard. It's a fact. Yes, but why? Well, it's Paul's, but he was away and I took delivery of it. And it's full of a driver dumped it in my drive instead of Paul's. Why? Because I was standing in Paul's drive when he arrived. For some reason, he assumed I was standing in my own drive. I mean, who in their right mind would jump to a conclusion like that? Howard? Yes, I would too. You know what you should have done? What? You should have stopped him. I couldn't. I tried to. He had his dirty great earmuffs on. He just dumped the stuff and drove off. The blighter. You should have given chase in the dormobile. I, I couldn't. Why? Because of a thundering great pile of manure stuck in front of the garage door. <laughs> well, you are in a pickle, aren't you? Would you like some rosehip syrup? No, thank you. What about a sweet sherry? No, thank you, Howard. I bet you wouldn't say no to a fondant fancy. <laughs> <laughs> we always laugh when I bring the fondant fancies home from Auntie Kate's cake shop. I let myself in, and then from the hall I call, Hello, Hilda, it's your fancy man. <laughs> he does. And then I say, What on earth do you mean? And I answer, I mean, your fondant fancy man. <laughs> let me laugh at them. But we've got one left. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't you think it's funny, the little things you do? Yeah, probably, Hilda, but I haven't come to tea. I need help. And who should I turn to but my two old pit props? Now, look, if we really get stuck in, I know it's getting dark, we can shovel that manure onto Paul's drive in six or seven hours. What do you say? No, sorry. <laughs> I went all the way to Page to get the stuff to make that horse. He's a donkey. <laughs> donkey? I won't help, Martin. But you know I've got a back. Yes, of course, Hilda. I'm sorry. I've always respected your back. Whereas your back, Howard, is a sort of back that has carried old England on its shoulders. 
very nice of you to say so, old man. But I can't help either. Why? I'd sooner not say. Well, does it come under the Official Secrets Act? <laughs> oh, all right, if you must know. It's my rash. What about your rash? It is brought on by various things. And I'm afraid manure is one of them. <laughs> I've never actually seen this rash, you know. I'm the only person in the whole world who has. Apart from Howard himself, of course. In the mirror. <laughs> well, that's been stopped, isn't it? Just a minute, just a minute. Phone the farmer. He didn't leave a phone number, just like Paul didn't. Oh, dear. He is in a pickle, isn't he, Neddy? <laughs> We've established that. If only Neddy were real, he could help. <laughs> goodbye, Howard. Goodbye, Neddy. <laughs> be very angry about the skip, isn't he? If I said no, Hilda, I'd be flying in the face of 17 years' experience. <laughs> I think the best thing to do is to just let him blow himself out like a squall at sea. My stomach is going over. Don't worry, Hilda. I'm here. <laughs> Guts for garters, Anne. Guts for garters. I'm on the warpath now. Whoever's responsible is going to get a faithful delivery by law in the book. If I had a solicitor, I'd be on the phone to him now. <laughs> even Harry, even Hilda. I haven't sent many people to prison in my life. You haven't sent anybody to prison? Well, there's always a first time. Who, I mean, who would stick a skip outside your house? I did it! <laughs> if I had an injunction, Hilda, I'd be slapping it straight on you. Oh, don't use legal jargon that you don't understand. This is my house. Well, behave properly in it, then, and give Hilda the chance to explain. Ha, ha, ha. Not it. <laughs> Go on, then. Well, I felt guilty as us not being able to help you move that manure. So, after Howard had come to work today, I thought I'd had an idea. Get a skip. Why? She wants to use it as a giant window box. Will you listen? <laughs> Go on, then. So, I phoned the people, and they sent it round. But they didn't send any men with shovels to shovel the manure into it. Men with shovels don't come with skips, Hilda. They don't supply them as a kit. <laughs> now, I tried to get them to take it back, but this man with butterflies tattooed on his knuckle said, once it's touched the ground, that's it. <laughs> and he trembled. Why didn't you jump at the automobile and follow him? Think. <laughs> oh. There's another bit of news, I'm afraid. Oh, of course there is. My bad news never comes in ones. It either comes in threes or tens or 4,961s. <laughs> I should listen to it before you return your final tally. <laughs> the thing is, the skip has to stay there for two days. I could ask why. It's a minimum length of hire. But I didn't know that. I signed a piece of paper. Excellent. Lovely. Fine. Have you arranged for a bulldozer to raise my house to the ground? I'm very sorry, Martin. Yes, yes. Will you be coming to indoor bowls tonight, Martin? <laughs> I didn't leave the house, Howard. I might get something else dumped on me. I don't think I want any dinner tonight, love. It's all right, I haven't done you any. <laughs> you see, if Howard and Hilda's news didn't take away your appetite, I felt sure that mine would. What is it? Well, you see, the wind was blowing from the southeast today. And unfortunately, it carried the smell of manure over our house, into Tallgate Road, and straight up Mrs. Norster's nose. Oh, no, not her. She can get very nasty. She caught me up the cul de sac once. I was trying to be careful. In fact, I felt like introducing her to the manure at first hand. Her and her stupid threats. Threats? What threats? Oh, she's going to report us to the environmental health officer. What? Do you realise what this means? I have become a health hazard. <laughs> Only to yourself, Martin. Now, do calm down. Calm down? How could I calm? Just a minute, just a minute. I have got you, love. Yes? I could unleash you on her. Your open university course. You mentioned health and disease as one of your subjects. You could go around there and blind her with science. But that's like having a gun loaded with a flag with bang written on it. <laughs> I don't think I want any dinner tonight, love. That was empty last night. I've heard about this. Skip madness, it's called. You leave an empty skip unattended and people from miles around somehow know. Do you think it's some kind of homing instinct, like swallows? Maybe. No. There's a mattress in here. And an old pram. What? 
dead monkey in there. What? You must bury it in the garden. Must I? It's not fair. The thought of it ending up with a rubbish tip. No, you're quite right. I just got to get my gardening gloves. <laughs> Morning, Anne. Morning, Arthur. That filled up quick. Didn't it just? And with all sorts of things. It's disgusting, isn't it? I don't know what gets into people sometimes. It's the age we live in. Moral decline. Anne, I can't find the gloves. Excuse me. If his arm comes away in my hand, I'm going to have to leave it. Oh, of course. <laughs> Was that bike there before? <coughs> no. Right. Here we go, then. What about here, was it? Yes, a bit to your right. <laughs> I've got its hand. I don't know. They didn't listen to reason, did they? They don't know the meaning of the word. I'm beginning to believe that anyone connected with Skips is insane. What have you been doing? I've been trying to help on the Mrs. Norster front. Oh, good girl. Good old Open University. What did you come up with? Nothing. Well, that's it then. That's it. We have dynamited our credentials as close people because we are an eyesore and we smell. <laughs> Hello, I'm back. Hi. Hello, Paul. Why have you got to skip outside? Hi. <laughs> Just for a laugh. We thought we'd like to see what sort of rubbish people dump in it. That doesn't ring true somehow. It was intended for your manure. Not my idea, because I know about men with shovels. All right, so Hilda tried because of her back and how it's private business, but if she's not to blame, you are. Oh, I see. What's it going to be about the manure? It should be in my drive, not yours. Good Lord, should it? Well, you were going to supervise the delivery. I did, but it was you not having molehills that queered my pitch on that one. <laughs> yes, of course. And I don't know if you've noticed, but there's tons of the stuff. Pile that on your garden, you won't be able to get out of your back door. Well, I intended to have a sort of manure party. You know, people come along with wheelbarrows and take away what they wanted. <laughs> well, you can forget that, mate. I want that stuff off my drive now. Right. Anything else? Yes. I want that skip taken away. Right. Anything else? Yes. And I want you to come in here with Mrs. Norster. Yes, well, Mrs. Norster, who has the charm of a dish of cold tapioca and lives in Tollgate Road, doesn't like the smell of manure and she's threatened us with a heavy mob from the Department of Environmental Health. Right. I'm terribly sorry about all this. I'll get it sorted out. Give me half an hour. Oh, half an hour? I'll give you half an hour to do that lot. I'm sorry. It isn't the warmest welcome back you've ever had. We never asked how the golf went. Oh, he won and swam back from Jersey in a world record time. <laughs> Thoroughly enjoyable. I ended up right down the field. Nowhere. Well, you didn't win anything, then? But I won a case of champagne. How? I'm afraid I got a hole in one. <laughs> the skip's been taken away, and the manure's almost loaded. 28 minutes. <laughs> well, aren't you pleased? I couldn't do it in three days. A thank you and an apology. Mm, we must help you out more often. Well, that's uh, very nice of you. Uh, I don't know the brand, but still... <laughs> The fellow's just hosing down the drive and said that... Oh, yes, he wanted some disinfectant. Uh, Paul, Paul, I can understand you getting the manure picked up because of your infinite number of mates, but how on earth did you get the skip taken away? Well, I simply pointed out that the conditions in the terms of their higher agreement were, in fact, De Profundus Mundi and Extincta Craptor. <laughs> totally illegal. I might have known you'd had illegal training. <laughs> I haven't. It's gibberish. G but they believed you. Well... You chance your arm, don't you? I don't. <coughs> well, I must pop back to the salon, see how all my Debbies are doing. Yeah. Well, oh, just a minute, just a minute. You haven't got Mrs. Norse sorted out yet. What a nice woman. <laughs> yes, um, she sent these for Anne just to say sorry. Mrs. Norse, but she shot someone's cat once. <laughs> Wait a minute. You bribed her, didn't you? Go on, admit it. You promised her a free hairdo, didn't you? Something like that.
trying to think I've just been a technical course myself. Oh, well done, brilliant. <laughs> well, perhaps you'd like to come in and have a cup of tea. Come on. Harold's just coming in for a cup of tea and a chat. A chat? What about? He's been doing an open university course for a year. It'd be lovely to talk to somebody who knows the ropes. What are you doing a course in, then? Applied mathematics. Really? <laughs> of course, I don't have time to take a degree myself. Vowels take up all my time. You should try engineering science. I've already got my city and gills, thank you. Come on, Harold. Oh, a young man, before you go in, would you mind moving your tractor back a bit? And I shall be going out in the dormobile shortly, at last. My pleasure. Funny? Hilarious. <laughs> You're going to have to get this university business right, you know. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> Try her now. <laughs> Didn't start. <laughs> Haven't you got some studying to do? It was running perfectly well half an hour ago. Yes, before you told Einstein here to turn the engine off. You should be able to fix this, you know. I'm not very good at engines. Applied mathematics. Oh, good. Here's Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. You're still here? No, we're all indoors. <laughs> we can't start it. Will you have a look at it? It's pointless. I'm a total ignoramus as far as engines are concerned. That doesn't matter. This situation is tailor-made for you, isn't it? Go on, go on. But well, what do you want me to do, Martin? Enchant the engine. Why not? I see. So all I do is find it and go... 